Hmm. Lots of you got in touch asking for more information about white balance and how to use white balance settings. Now, assuming you've already seen the film with Jez the blacksmith, we were introducing you to the whole concept of how daylight changes colour and light just changes colour in general, according to where you are. We're going to look now at how to use the settings in reality. Now, I'm sitting in the lounge of a really nice hotel, having a look at a white menu, drinking coffee out of a white cup. You're seeing them as white. You're seeing me as the right colour and all the rest of it, looking devilishly handsome too, I might add. However, I'm actually yellow, I'm jaundiced. The reason you're seeing me the right colour is because Jane has the video camera white balanced for the conditions we're in. Now, if you've taken a picture in the lounge at home and the flash hasn't gone off, the chances are you've got a yellow nicotine coloured picture. And that's because these lights, the tungsten, tungsten produces yellow light. And if you don't white balance your camera for that yellow light, I would look completely yellow too. But what would happen if we go outside? So let's go and have a go at this. We're gonna take a little walk into the garden. Now, Jane isn't gonna change the white balance on the camera. We're just gonna move outside, keeping the white balance the same. And as we're going through here, I'm guessing that I'm changing color. As we step out into the garden, having come through the conservatory, I'm now probably a bit of a bluey colour. That's because the white balance inside is for yellow. We're outdoors and I'm in sunshine. Let's go over here in the shade. In the shade, it's going to be even worse. I'm going to be really, really, really blue. Because shady colour, shaded light is blue in itself. It's already blue, just like in cloudy light. Clouds are a blue-grey colour and the light coming through gets filtered into a bluey colour. That's why you're seeing a blue man. Now, somewhere out here, I've got something which I thought would be a bit of a wheeze to photograph. We're in a garden, so let's shoot some flowers. But because I want to shoot them in different changing lighting, now, now by lighting I mean colour temperature light, I'm not talking about directional light, we need something a bit more portable. So I've got a nice bunch of flowers. That's better, I'm the right colour again at last. Don't look quite so cold. Now, bunch of flowers, we know they're white flowers. So what I'm gonna do is put them in the sunshine, okay? So I'm just gonna set them up here. Now, actually I'm gonna put them a bit higher up because I wanna just try and keep something fairly neutral behind them. I'm not sure if that's gonna, Lorna, would you mind sneaking out here a tick? Because I don't want the glass to fall over. If you just tuck in there, can you just hold that around the bottom? That's brilliant, just so it doesn't fall over. Thanks. Right. Okay, so, camera. Set your white balance, and I do it on this by pressing the WB. And I turn the dial until I get a picture of the sun. I've now set sunny white balance. Now, I'm in the shade, but the flowers are in the sun. You set the white balance for your subject, not for, not for you, okay? So it's a, it's a sunny white balance, despite the fact I'm in the shade. Quick picture. I'm only shooting the top of the flowers, so. Ah, oh, lovely. Splendid. Thanks, Lorna. I'm just gonna pop these into the shade. So we're going over here, some other steps. Now, if I sit them on this step, like that. There we go. Hopefully they'll stay there and won't fall over. Now, if I don't change the white balance, if I leave it in sunny and I take a picture of them there in the shade, even though there's just a bit of sunlight. There we go. They look very cold, very blue. That's because when you use the sunny setting in sunlight, your camera's adding a bit of blue to counteract the buttery yellowness of the sunshine. So when you go into shade, and you've got sunny setting, it's too blue. So, what you do again, press the white balance, turn the dial, or whatever it has on your camera, set it on the shady setting. Same picture. This stuff isn't rocket science, it really is. Really simple, and it makes a big difference. Look at that, your flowers are the right color. And actually they're in nicer light, because when you've got flowers in direct sunlight, it's probably a bit strong. Those are in quite pleasant light now. So what you've got to do is set the, light, the, the white balance for the appropriate lighting that you're in. There's one for flash, there's one for cloudy. Cloudy and shady are very subtly different, there's not a lot of difference. But if you keep setting them yourself, 
For whatever lighting condition is on your subject, you will make sure your colours are consistent. Now I know some of you are going, but I've got auto white balance mic, why on earth would I want to give myself extra work? Now, when you set auto white balance, I press the button and I spin it around to auto, the big A, the camera can very easily be confused because the camera doesn't know what colour the light is around us. The camera only knows that its programmers have told it that the average picture contains this much red, this much blue, this much green. And so whenever you take a picture, your camera is trying to make your image conform to that algorithm. So if you've got something completely different in the background, it can all go wrong. Something that will give you even more problems than auto white balance is when you have mixed light sources. For example, in the room here, we've got a lot of tungsten going on. Outside, it's a bit later in the day, and it's a sort of cloudy, not quite twilight, which is a very blue colour. That's why I've got yellow down this side of my face and a bit of blue going on that, that side. Now, it doesn't really matter, even if you do a custom white balance, there's still two different light sources. Take a look over here. I've got a pot. I'm going to do a little dance with you. Let's swing around this way. We've got a pot plant here sitting on the windowsill. Look, this side is very yellow because it's being lit with this tungsten light. That side is a bit blue in colour because it's got daylight coming through onto it. So whatever you do when you try and photograph it, you've got a problem. Let's give it a go. Now, first off, I'm going to take a picture of this. Pre-prepared, of course. Cloudy. I'm balancing for the light outside. That's the colour it is outdoors. So let me just quickly take a picture of it. And as you can see, the outside is pretty much bang on. It looks really nice. What's going on outside the window, the side of the pot, everything. But on the inside, it's completely yellow. Very, very nicotine-y. The next thing we can do is to roll the white balance across and let's do it on a tungsten white balance. This time we're white balancing for what's going on inside the room, not what's going on out in the garden. Squeeze that one off. Now you can see what's going on in the room is far less yellow. It's got a bit of a tinge there because that's got a yellow lampshade, but it's nothing like as yellow as it was. But everything outside, it looks a bit like it's underwater. So of course the big question is, what do you do in these circumstances? Well, you can either stick it into the computer afterwards and try and match the two images up and blend them together to get the colours right. If you're into software and you're a bit of a computer whiz, that's probably a good way of doing it. I'm not. I don't really enjoy that kind of behaviour at all, as many of you probably know. The other thing you could do is with a bit of daylight lighting. So what I'm going to do now is introduce some daylight coloured light, which is 6,500 Kelvin, on the inside, which will match with what's going on on the outside. And to do it, I've got my trusty old Metz flash gun. Now, the white balance setting I'm going to use now is the flash setting. And the reason I'm going to use flash is that it's very close to daylight. And it's kind of in between, it's, it's not in between. It's a very close daylight setting. Just go with a flash one. Right, here we go. Now, if you're going to hit something with flash, it's going to ruin the mood. This isn't going to do a great deal for, for the image, but it will get the colours about right. I'm not going to point this straight at our subject because it really will kill it. I'm going to kind of whop it up off the ceiling over here. So here we go. There we go. Puff of flash. You can see it's kind of evened those colours out quite a lot. We've still got a bit of a yellowy tinge on the inside, but we've lost the blueness from the outside. The two are sort of matched together. But when you flick between the two, can you see the subtlety of the shape of the bowl is missing? It's cleaned up the colours, but we've lost some of the form, some of the modelling of the lighting on the bowl. This is a really tricky one all photographers have to deal with. I photographed a wedding cake at a wedding recently in very similar circumstances. Here it is. Do you see what I mean? One side is yellow, the other side is blue. Now there's a sneaky little post-production trick you can do here, and that's to make it black and white. <laughs> but that is about all you can do with it. So I hope that's helped you get your head around how white balance works and what to do with it.